Dante's Box Nation, what's going on, guys? So as expected, as predicted, ever since Gennady Golovkin's performance against Kell Brook this past weekend, everyone is aggressively calling out Gennady Golovkin. Everybody wants to be the first person to crack the Gennady Golovkin code. Now, Chris Eubank, he's been calling out Gennady Golovkin for quite some time. As you guys know by now, Chris Eubank, he was in negotiations to get this fight that uh, we just seen this past weekend with Gennady Golovkin against Kell Brook. But for whatever reason, the fight didn't come to fruition. A lot of people are speculating it had a lot to do with Chris Eubank's father because he's very tough when it comes to the negotiation table. But I believe... After them seeing how close Golovkin came to possibly losing to a welterweight, now they can't wait to get in the ring with Gennady Golovkin. You guys seen the video um, I just dropped. Uh, Billy Joe Saunders, he's been calling out Golovkin aggressively. And once again, all of these fighters are basically in line right now. So Chris Eubank, he had a couple things to say to Gennady Golovkin. And he talked about Kell Brook basically, or Kell Brook's team throwing in a towel. This is what Chris Eubank had to say about um, Kell Brook and Gennady Golovkin. In my opinion, it is nobody's job but the referee to stop the fight. I have never been taught to rely on my corner to take me out of a fight, to take me out of a sticky situation. This is boxing. In boxing, you fight to the end. You fight until you cannot fight anymore. My father has been in way more situations than Kell Brook was in, and his corner never pulled him out. And he never tried to find a way out. He stayed there, stood his ground. This is what Chris Eubank told Talk Sport. Now, I agree with Chris Eubank to a certain extent, but at the same time, I can't really judge Kell Brook for moving up two weight classes facing one of the hardest punchers in all of boxing and getting his eye socket broke and considering quitting. Or even if your corner stops the fight, I'm not going to be too hard on Team Kell Brook for that right there. But going back to Chris Eubank, I just told you guys in the last video I just dropped, it'll be really interesting to see who Golovkin faces next. For the very first time, Golovkin, he has almost every single fighter that he's been calling out available now except for Canelo and I won't even be surprised if Canelo all of a sudden pops out of nowhere and jumps on board and says he wants Gennady Golovkin now. after watching Gennady Golovkin look very vulnerable in this fight this past weekend but going back to Chris Eubank you know I told you guys before and I'm gonna keep telling you this Gennady Golovkin is a sucker for an uppercut. The the right the left jab right uppercut is a perfect combination. It is a perfect set of punches to throw when you're in the ring with Gennady Golovkin. We just seen Kell Brook bust Golovkin's nose with that uppercut. And when it comes to Chris Eubank, Chris Eubank, that is one of his favorite punches is the uppercut. You know, a lot of people didn't expect Kell Brook to be able to tie up the much bigger, the much stronger Gennady Golovkin. A lot of people uh, watched the video that I uploaded, it's still on my channel, where Gennady Golovkin is basically teaching Sullivan Barrera how to fight on the inside, basically how to, how to fight in a clinch. So Golovkin is teaching him how to do this. But what I found surprising is Kell Brook, he was able to casually just tie up Golovkin whenever he wanted to. There was really no resistance. Golovkin didn't make it difficult at all for Kell Brook to hold and tie up. So with that being said, this is something that Chris Eubank does occasionally as well. Chris Eubank is good at fighting on the inside, but he will also tie you up on the inside. We haven't really seen Gennady Golovkin deal with the type of power that he usually dishes out right i would say on a scale of one to ten 
we would all speculate that Golovkin's power is, is probably a 9 or maybe even a 10, right? So I would say anybody with the power from an 8 to a 10 would be a hard puncher, probably even from a 7 to a 10. I don't even think you need to be a perfect 10 to get Gennady Golovkin's respect in the power department. Matter of fact, I know you don't have to be a 10 because Kell Brook wasn't a 10. And Kell Brook, he was inflicting a lot of damage on Gennady Golovkin. You see Gennady Golovkin bleeding for the first time. He looked battered, he looked bruised. And the fight only went five rounds. It didn't even go a whole five rounds. Imagine if that Kell Brook Golovkin fight would have went 12 rounds. Can you imagine how Golovkin's face would have looked? I mean, I would expect Kell Brook's face to look beat up because he's a welterweight fighting the hardest punch in middleweight in the world right now, right? So things will be totally different when it comes to Chris Eubank. Because see, when it comes to this fight against Kell Brook, just like Oscar De La Hoya said, when it comes to Golovkin, Golovkin has to beat you with his power, okay? He can't beat you moving side to side. He can't beat you backing up. He has to beat you with his power. That's exactly what he did with Kell Brook. Matter of fact, Carl Froch said the same thing after. So the reason why a Chris Eubank fight would be a lot different compared to the Kell Brook fight is because Golovkin will be in there with a natural middleweight. He'll be in there with a guy that can crack damn near as good as Golovkin can crack. He'll be in there with a guy that will most likely have a 100% health bar when it comes to my Street Fighter analogy. I just told you guys before this video, and well, in a couple videos, that when it came to Kell Brook, he went in a fight with a handicap. So it was a handicap bout, right? Kell Brook was going into the fight with like a 20% health bar, while Gennady Golovkin, the natural middleweight, had a 100% health bar. So that means that while Kell Brook could only make like two or three mistakes, Golovkin could make like 10 or 15 mistakes. That won't be the case when Golovkin gets in the ring with natural athletic middleweights. Now, don't get the message misconstrued. I'm not trying to tell you that I'm picking Chris Eubank to um, win the fight. I mean, if the fight comes to fruition, then I'll assess it and break it down. But for now, I am telling you guys that Chris Eubank would be a hell of a test for Gennady Golovkin right now. But out of Chris Eubank, Danny Jacobs, Canelo Alvarez, I believe Danny Jacobs, he is the most athletic. He is the strongest when it comes to opponents for Golovkin. The only problem with Danny Jacobs is he's been knocked out before. So someone has been knocked out before, you have to question how his chin is. Believe it or not, some fighters that get knocked out, they become better. They learn from their mistakes and they're a lot wiser. And then you have the other fighters that become very susceptible to getting knocked out again. We've seen that with a lot of fighters today. So we really don't know, but what I'm telling you is I'm very impressed with how Danny Jacobs annihilated Peter Quillen. And I'm impressed the way he was able to track down or walk down Sergio Mora and knock out a very elusive target. That's not to say that, that Sergio Mora was this huge world beater that was pound for pound, top 15, one of the best fighters in the world, because he wasn't. But what he was and what he is, is a very elusive, slippery target. And to be able to knock out someone like that who's never been knocked out before, it was pretty impressive. So... I really look forward to seeing, once again, who Gennady Golovkin is going to pick next. I mean, if his options are Chris Eubank, Danny Jacobs, Billy Joe Saunders, or Canelo Alvarez, then all of those are good options. All of those are good fights. And as far as I'm concerned, all of those are 50-50 fights. So let's see what happens. That's all I got for now, and I'm on to the next one.